that's one thing I've noticed about these mods is that uh, some of the scenes. I had a great time this weekend. Uh oh, what have we got here? I'm going to predict that Yuri is about to tackle hug the player and just like plant one on him. What's up, everybody? Caesar Madrazo here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Outcast. Now, uh, today we're going to start um, not exactly where we left off last time because I realized as I was playing through more of the mod that um, the first good bit of this mod is pretty much just the original story with a few minor changes to it. So in order to make uh, this series a little bit more interesting, I thought what we would do is just skip ahead to the festival day and see how things get different there because from that point on, pretty much everything should be new instead of having to go through the original story again. So, that's what we're going to do. We have uh, Act 1, Chapter 6, A Discussion with Sayori, which, if I remember right, this should be the day of the festival. And if it's not, then we'll see how different it is. And if it's not too different, then we'll uh, skip ahead. As I'm playing my game, my phone rings. I answer it, and Sayori is on the... And it's Sayori on the other end. Hey, Caesar. Hi, Sayori. How did it go with Yuri? It was good. Wait, how did you know we finished? I saw you guys outside from my bedroom window. N not that I was eavesdropping or anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Seriously, though. How did it go? I checked the clock. The clock reads 2.45 p.m. It turns out I've been playing for quite a while now. I, well, can I come over and discuss it? All right. I'm guessing you and Natsuki are finished? Yeah, we're done. Natsuki left a few minutes ago. Alright, be right over. I hang up and ho head over to Sayori's house. I walk to Sayori's front door and knock. Sayori answers almost immediately. She practically drags me upstairs into her bedroom. I barely even got a chance to say hi. <laughs> sorry. I was really excited. I can tell. Anyway, tell me how it went. Well, we made our decorations, we had some light-hearted conversations, and as she was about to leave, I simply asked if she wanted to spend more time together. She said yes. I guess I didn't necessarily ask her on a date, it went a lot better than expected, but I was struggling to get all my thoughts out. Well, the festival is a great place to start. I'd say so. Ah, oh, Caesar, I'm so happy for you! Thanks, I'm a little bit nervous though. It's okay to be nervous, Caesar. I think you'll be fine, though. After all, Yuri clearly enjoys spending time with you. Have you noticed how much uh, you've made Yuri talk during the club? I guess I haven't. That's quite an accomplishment. Is it really, though? I'd say so. Don't get me wrong. Yuri's wonderful, but she does keep to herself quite a bit. I've known her for a while, and even I had a hard time at first getting her to talk to me. You've managed to open her up in just a few days. Well, I'm still getting used to it myself. I like her a lot, though. She may seem shy and timid at first glance, but she's so much more than that. It's a shame many don't see her for who she really is. Yeah, Yuri's pretty great, isn't she? There's silence for a moment. Well, uh, I'm a little tired. I think I'm gonna get home and get some rest for the festival. Well, that's weird. You, you're the one who said you wanted to come over, and you just talked to Sayori for just you know, less than two minutes, it seems, and then you're gonna go back home? I mean, if you were that tired, then why couldn't you just text her all the details instead of coming over to her house for literally just, like, less than five minutes? All right, see you later, Caesar. See you later, Sayori. I exit Sayori's house and head back home. I honestly can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great! All right. That's one thing I've noticed about these mods, is that uh, some of the scenes... I had a great time this weekend. Uh-oh. What have we got here? <laughs> We've got voices. Um, anyway, I'll get to... <laughs> this. I'm curious about this, but as I was saying, uh, what I've noticed in this mod in particular is that some of the dialogue, um, they seem to be contained within very small scenes. And so you might say that that makes the pacing of the mod seem faster, but really it just seems kind of like... Um, it seems kind of like, you know, they're just a cut short. Like, I don't know. It's, uh, I will say, building a mod is hard. It's, uh, as somebody who's building a meta series, I can tell you that it is really, really difficult to write any scene in a way that makes it seem like, uh, that makes it seem natural. 
So uh, I guess I can't fault uh, I guess I can't fault the mod too much for that. It's just the thing I've noticed is that some of the scenes seem to be very very short. They're like five or six uh, text uh, lines of uh, text long, and then they just end. But anyway, let's see what this is about. We have a voice. Is this supposed to be uh, Yuri's voice? I wanted to tell him how I felt, but I was too shy. He did say he wanted to see me more often, though. Is this my chance to make something happen between me and him? Maybe it's just me, but I'm getting a little bit of a, of a Yandere Simulator vibe from this voice. I wonder if this is one of the voice actors that uh, has done some Yandere Simulator work. I mean, I do like him, but I'm not sure if he likes me the same way. I think he meant it as more of a friendly gesture. What would I know? I hardly know what love is. Interesting choice of voice for Yuri, though. Uh, the voice is a little bit higher than I would expect Yuri's voice to be. But, um, you know, it's up to interpretation. Everybody has their own headcanon for what each of the Dokis would sound like. Because, you know, Monica's the only one that has an official voice. But in this mod, Yuri has a voice, too. That's pretty cool. Alright, so Act 2, Chapter 1, The Festival. I turn off my alarm. It's the day of the festival. I get out of bed and check my phone for any messages. There's one from Yuri. Good morning, Caesar. Please make sure not to forget anything. I'll see you at the festival. I nod to myself and head to my bathroom to the shower. Once I finish, I get dressed in my school uniform. I grab my school bag along with the decorations and head downstairs. There will be plenty of food at the festival, so I decide to have a light breakfast. I quickly make a bowl of cereal. I'm digging this new version of the uh, Ohio Sayori theme. This is really good. After I finish, I brush my teeth and head out the door. I make my commute to school. I'm making sure to carry all the supplies carefully, especially the poster. It took the most amount of time to make, and I don't want anything to happen to it. All of a sudden, I hear Sayori calling out to me. Hey, wait up for me! I patiently wait for Sayori to catch up. Sayori is taking it a little slower this time since she's carrying a tray of cupcakes. She finally manages to catch up. Ha! Ha! Hi, Caesar. How are you this morning? I could ask you the same thing, Sayori. I'm good! I have all the cupcakes Natsuki and I made for the festival. Sayori shows me the cupcake tray. They smell so yummy! Yeah, they do smell good. I want one so badly. You can have one at the festival. If you eat one now, Natsuki would somehow blame me. It's best if we wait. Yeah, you're right. We should start walking. We continue walking to school. We arrive just in time to start setting things up. We enter the club room. Hey guys! Come in. We're just preparing for the event. Go ahead and set up any decorations you have. Will do. Thanks. Everyone is getting ready for the event. Monica is setting out the pamphlets that she and Sayori made on each of the desks. Natsuki and Sayori start putting cupcakes on the desk accompanied by a napkin. Yuri is sweeping the floor and picking up anything that can be disposed of. I walk over to her with the decorations. Hey, Yuri. Hey, Caesar. I see you brought all the decorations. Of course. Should we go ahead and finish... Th Wait. Should we should go ahead and finish the banner then? <laughs> yes, that would be great. Alright, let me grab the paint. Oh no. What's wrong, Caesar? I actually meant to put the paint in my backpack so we could finish, but I left it at home. I'm really sorry, Yuri. No need to fret. We can just borrow some paint from the art room. That's a great idea! I look behind me and find uh, Monica helping Sayori. Hey, Monica. Yeah, what's up? Yuri and I need to finish the banner, so we're gonna grab some supplies from the art room. Alright, just make it quick. We'll be sharing poems very soon. Understood. Let's go, Yuri. We both walk out into the hallway. Where was the art class? I think it's on the first floor. Alright, let's go. We resume our walk to the first floor. We enter the class and go to the back of the room where the closet is located. I hope what we need is in there. I start rummaging through various containers to find the supplies. And, uh, wow, the art room closet looks uh, suspiciously just like the literature club room closet. You even got uh, the same textbooks and everything back there. Like uh, that that rainbow colored uh, book set 
that's uh, back there. Is that some of Natsuki's manga? Hmm. Ah, there we go. I look on the top shelf and find a container with paint and brushes. Do we need anything else? Uh, I think we're good. All right, let's head back then. We'll be performing soon. R right. I start walking back, but notice shortly after that Yuri hasn't moved. Yuri? Is something wrong? Uh-oh. Where's this gonna go? Uh, I... Yuri's fumbling with her words. It's her nervous side that I haven't witnessed in a while. Okay, I'm gonna make a prediction here. I'm going to predict that Yuri is about to tackle hug the player and just like plant one on him. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure if I'm ready to perform. Ah, no, I was wrong. <laughs> I'm scared. What are you afraid of? You'll do great, Yuri. When we all reviewed poems with each other in front of the club, you were amazing. Why are you so convinced that you wouldn't do well? It was a lot easier when it was just you and my friends. But I have a feeling that I'll somehow mess up. And everyone will laugh at me. Yuri, I'm telling you right now. You'll do wonderful. You just have to believe in yourself. You really think so? I know so. After all, the performance won't be that long to begin with. Just take a deep breath, relax, and you'll do fine. Okay. That makes me feel a little more confident. Good. Now let's head back. We have some work to do. You're right. That banner won't finish itself. We make it back to the club and finish the banner. While we wait for it to dry, we set out the candles and put up the window curtains. Yuri and I are in awe at how well it looks. It looks great! I couldn't agree more. It's all thanks to your creativity, Yuri. Yuri looks away blushing. Oh, stop. You're too nice to me, Caesar. <laughs> I'm serious. It looks really good. Don't forget that you were a big contributor to the decorations. Monica comes over to look at the decorations. Hey, guys. Those decorations look wonderful. Well done, you two. Thank you, Monica. I'm glad they turned out as good as they did. Absolutely. Well, be prepared because the festival is about to begin. Monica walks off to set up a few more things before our event starts. Are you ready, Yuri? As ready as I'll ever be. All right. The festival finally begins, and to our surprise, we already have a few students walk in. As they come into the club room, Monica and Sayori introduce themselves and discuss the club. Natsuki is serving her cupcakes to the guests. I can tell they're enjoying them. Yuri is standing by the front, nodding to those who enter. I have a feeling she's nervously anticipating her turn to share poems. A few minutes pass and the room is almost full. Monica then calls out to everyone for an announcement. Okay, everyone. If everyone could please find a seat so that we may begin. Everyone takes a seat. Monica motions for all the members to come to the front. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to come to our Literature Club event. We're happy to have you. Everyone claps. We're going to go ahead and start off with introductions. My name's Monica. I'm the club president. Monica receives a big round of applause. She then motions for me to introduce myself. I'm going second? Why isn't the vice president going second? Um, hello, my name is Caesar. I recently joined the Literature Club and I uh, really enjoy my time here. I hope you guys will consider it. I receive a round of applause. I'm not sure that was a round of applause worthy, but okay. Next is Natsuki. Hello, I'm Natsuki. I enjoy reading manga and I made the cupcakes. I hope you guys enjoy. Just like Monica and I, Natsuki also receives a round of applause. Hi, everybody! My name is Sayori. I'm the vice president and co-founder of the Literature Club. I also really like cupcakes. <laughs> the crowd laughs, and Sayori receives a round of applause as well. Everyone's eyes land on Yuri. It's silent for a moment. All right, here we go. Yuri finally says something. Hi, everyone. M my name is Yuri. Everyone is looking at her in confusion. Why confusion? I, I enjoy reading and writing. I think the club is really fun. Yuri finishes speaking and there's a moment of silence. I look in the back of the class and see a few students mutter something to each other. Uh-oh. She receives a rather poor round of applause. Why? 
she didn't say anything that was that was out of sync with what anybody else said. I mean, frankly, what pretty much everybody said was kind of boring. I mean, we only said like two or three sentences each. It was just kind of like, hi, I like the club and I like cupcakes. Yay. So I don't know. I think if anything, Yuri was one of the more appropriate speakers here saying, I love reading, I love writing, and the club is great. So join if, uh, if you think you'd be interested. It wasn't terrible, just not as enthusiastic compared to the other girls. Well, I mean, enthusiasm is only a small part of it. As I said, just like what she said seems like the most in sync with what you would expect people in a literature club to say. Just none of them, none of them really knocked it out of the park here. Even, even the player didn't. Monica tries to save the situation. Thank you for your intro, Yuri. <laughs> Let's move on. We're now going to have a poetry performance starting with yours truly. Well, Monica, I think a better way to save the situation here would have been to, you know, just uh, offer Yuri a little bit of support and saying, and saying, ah, you know, Yuri's just a little shy, but she's, but that's just because she's such a nice person and she's such a wonderful addition to the club. I want to say you kind of made it a little bit worse there, Monica. Just saying, okay, thank you, Yuri. Let's move on. Anyway, <laughs> the poem I'll be reading is called "The Way We Fly." Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Monica begins reciting her poem. Just like our previous recitation, uh, Monica's confident voice fills the room. The poem has an inflection to it. She has the right tone and emotion to bring the words to life. Within no time, she finishes and receives a round of applause. Monica bows. Thank you, everyone. Let's have Caesar go next. I take a step forward and clear my throat. <coughs> this poem is called My Dream. I begin reciting my poem. It begins a bit slow, but I eventually find a good rhythm. I stumble on my words here and there, but I finish before I know it. I receive a round of applause and bow to the audience. Thank you, Caesar. Sayori, would you like to go next? Okay! This poem is called My Meadow. Sayori begins her poem. Her soft yet cheerful voice perfectly matches the poem she recites. It's very calm and relaxing, but Sayori delivers it with plenty of emotion. Sayori finishes and we applaud. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Sayori. You're up next, Natsuki. Natsuki takes a step forward. This poem is called Jump. Natsuki begins re re reciting her poem. She does surprisingly well. Even her sour attitude is almost non-existent. Her poem has a good rhythm to it, and the words bounce up and down, giving it a life of its own. Natsuki finishes and... Audience applause. Applauds. I can tell that we all have improved since we practiced. Well, don't speak too soon. After all, Yuri has to go next. And given Monica's uh, saving the situation that we saw a few minutes ago, this, uh, this could lead to some issues. Let's see. Your turn, Yuri. And the music got shut off. So she's going to... Okay, I'm predicting here. Yuri is going to uh, start saying her poem. She's going to get nervous. And um, she's going to like freeze about halfway through the poem and everybody's gonna like you know judge her maybe one or two like mean kids will laugh at her or something and then she's gonna run off uh, crying Yuri takes uh, steps forward poem in hand her hands are shaking she takes a deep breath this poem is called it's called after image of a crimson eye Yuri's trying to recite her poem but she can't seem to get the words out ah just like Eminem. Just don't be throwing up mom's spaghetti or anything. I glance at the crowd. Some of the students are noticeably getting frustrated and bored. I don't know. I feel like, in general, uh, students would be pretty empathetic towards somebody who is very shy towards performing. For shy people, just like one of the biggest fears that they have is having to stand in front of a crowd and recite something. And that's something that I actually dealt with when I was a lot younger. I'm obviously a lot better at it now. I mean, otherwise, <laughs> I wouldn't be on YouTube. But um, I can tell you that from somebody who uh, used to go through that when I was a lot younger, it can be really, really tough. And I think that that's something that a lot of people can empathize with. So I don't think, uh, realistically, the students would be so quick to get frustrated or bored at somebody being too shy to speak. I even caught one student looking at his watch. Even the girls are looking a bit worried. Uh, I, all of a sudden, a student in the crowd speaks up. Oh, 
What's the hold up? I have other events to attend. Are you just gonna stand there and waste our time or what? I, uh... Yuri looks in our direction. I'm sorry. And then, ah, yes, he's crying and running away. The room is quiet. Me and the girls stand there motionless. Well, this is quite a club, huh? Why is she even in this club if she can't recite a poem? Alright, so, uh, that student is an asshole. I'm angered at this point. Hey, why don't you leave her alone? Okay, well, this also is probably not a very good response. I mean, if you're trying to recruit club members, then, um, then you don't want to get angry and start shouting at uh, the crowd that you have. I mean, yeah, that student is being an asshole, but, um, but retaliating like this is just going to make all of the other students think, Oh, man, these people are not friendly. I don't want to be in this club. She's just shy, all right? Why don't you show some, res uh, show some respect? Well, you see, that, that is a somewhat appropriate response, but you shouldn't be yelling at, um, at uh, somebody just because they made a somewhat rude response during uh, a recruitment uh, presentation. It should be something more along the lines of, uh, my apologies for the interruption, folks. Um, you know, she's just really shy. I'm sure that a lot of you probably also uh, would not be too keen to speak in front of a crowd like this. But, um, but don't worry. We're going to continue with the presentation, and one of us is just going to go check on her. Uh, uh okay. I I'll show some respect. And, you know, can... <laughs> Okay, if they're the kind of student that's gonna snap like that, saying, Hey, why is she even in this club? Like, if she can't even recite a poem, what's the holdup? Then I doubt they would be the kind of student that as soon as somebody snaps back, they'd be like, Oh, okay, okay, I'll back off. I think they'd be more like, You know what? Screw you and screw this club. I'm out of here. He replies in a very condescending way, which angers me even more. Oh, okay, so he's being sarcastic. The class starts giggling with him. Oh, man. So this is the club is starting to look kind of foolish. I sent my poem on a nearby desk. Girls, if you'll excuse me. Okay, so he's either about to go check on Yuri, or he's about to, like, uh, punch this kid. I'm sorry. They nod, excusing me from the performance. I walk out into the corridor. Oh, man. Where'd you go this time, Yuri? I walk for a bit and call out to Yuri, but there's no response. I feel really bad for her. Yuri even told me she wasn't ready, but I didn't listen. It's all my fault. I have to find her. Since she's nowhere to be found on this floor, I instead head downstairs. Well, it's not your fault. I mean, Monica's the one who, uh... Uh, who... Ooh. New music. And this is really saddening music, too. So, um... I think things are about to get pretty real here. Okay. Let's see. While peeking over the railing, I find Yuri sitting at the bottom of the stairs. It doesn't look like she's noticed me. I'm not sure how to approach this situation. This is way worse than the argument with Natsuki. I'd say it's kind of on par. Eh, you know, it, it, it is a little bit worse. I slowly walk down the set of stairs and sit down on the landing above Yuri. It pains me to see you like this. Ah? Huh? Yuri turns around. You're very smart, kind, and talented. Yet you're treated so poorly. I've always been treated this way. I'm just used to it now. Yuri, no one deserves to be treated the, the same you've been. It's just not right. I agree, but this is my reality. Remember when I told you that I eat at lunch alone? That I only find comfort in the world of books? Well, it's true. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy company every now and then. But it's times like these where I wish I could just disappear. I could just go and live in one of my books, maybe make up a story for myself, and nobody would know that I'm gone, or care to know for that matter. She buries her face in her hands again. Yuri, that's far from the truth. There are people who care about you. They're few and far between, though. It's been like this for most of my life, Caesar. People don't normally converse with me because they think I'm weird. You're not weird, Yuri. Honestly, that's... Uh, I feel like that's not a very helpful response. I feel like saying, well, okay, you're weird, but that's not a bad thing. Because, you know, if somebody knows that they are something, then the worst thing you can do is say, no, 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 you're not that thing. 
I actually had this conversation with a friend of mine in college who was, um, who was overweight. And she said that one of the worst things that you can say to a person who knows that they're overweight is, No, 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 you're not overweight, because it's like you are clearly lying. So just, you know, it's better to say, okay, so maybe you are, but that's not as bad as you think. Like in this situation, saying, okay, so, yeah, Yuri, you're a little bit different, but you know what? I mean, who says... Who says that's a bad thing? That just means that you have unique characteristics to offer to everybody who knows you. You're unique. There you go. There's a silence between us. Yuri doesn't look up. Yuri, you need to know something. Even if there were tons of people who neglect you, just know that there are people who really do love you for who you are. I think one thing that uh, Jordan Peterson points out in uh, his speeches is that... Um, one thing that you don't want to go around doing is announcing your problems to the world except for people that you really really trust and the reason being as he put it is that 90 percent of the world doesn't care that you have those problems and the last 10 percent they're happy you have those problems so in a way we're kind of all dealing with what yuri's talking about here just people who just don't really seem to care like what your problems are or what your struggles are and uh, I don't think that's because people are inherently selfish. I think that's just because we all have our own struggles. And I think that offering that little piece of reality, it uh, even though it does sound like it could be a little bit of a bummer, I think that for people like Yuri here, there would be some relief in knowing that. That uh, really everybody is dealing with a certain level of people don't care about me. We all have flaws, big and small. Some can't be fixed entirely, but they can be worked on. But the people who do love you will accept your flaws. And I'm one of those people. Yuri looks at me again. What? What are you saying, Caesar? I move down to the same level as Yuri. What I'm saying is that the people who do care about you are the ones that matter the most. That guy in the class? He's not someone that wants to see you grow. You shouldn't pay him or anyone who treats you like that any attention. The club cares deeply about you. I do too. Caesar, that's so kind of you to say. I just can't comprehend this. How could some like someone like me ever win your affection? Uh, you've you're probably the uh, you're either the most popular or the second most popular girl in the entire DDLC uh, fan base. So realistically speaking, it's not that hard. <laughs> Simply put, you're a good person. I don't care what anyone else says. Nothing will change my mind about you, Yuri. In fact, there's something else I want to tell you. Yuri has a curious look on her face. I've only known you for a short amount of time, but you've changed my life in the past few days. Uh, that's a bit of a stretch there, man. You're, you're kind of... I feel like you're being a little bit manipulative saying something like that. I've known you for such a short time, but you've changed me. You have such an impact on me. Just, uh, no. You've taught me so much about literature. Also kind of a stretch. You've made me enjoy reading again. But you know what most of all? What? You make me happy when I spend time with you. Yuri, what I'm trying to tell you is, uh-huh, here we go. Uh, so, um, again... I know I'm probably trying to be a little too realistic about this because, you know, it's a it's a mod for a romance game, but realistically speaking, this is just, it's too soon to be saying this. <laughs> so there you go. I love you, Yuri. I, I, I... Yuri's having a hard time finishing her sentence. She starts tearing up again. They aren't, however, tears of sadness this time. Man, the, the drama in this scene. I love you too, Caesar. I've loved you since I met you. Alright, so now, <laughs> this is taking a little bit of a yandere turn here. This sounds a little bit more like Act 2, Yuri. I've loved you since the moment I laid eyes on you. I just want to be with you forever. You're someone that lets me, lets apostrophe S me, be me. And you don't even hate me for it. I could never hate you. I never even thought I was capable of love. After all... How can someone love you if you don't even love yourself? Well, that's, um, that's a problem that a lot of people are facing. However, it's not so much a question of how can someone love you if you don't even love yourself. The question I think is, that's a little bit more common is how can 
you love anyone else if you don't love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, and you don't respect yourself, and you don't find any value in yourself, then it's a lot more far-fetched of an idea to try to love and respect and find value in others. It's sort of, sort of half right here. I think that it's very possible for other people to love you even if you don't love yourself, but I think it's hard for somebody to love others if they don't love themselves first. Well, I do. I'll even make you a promise. Whatever it takes, I'll help you with your struggles. I don't want you to be alone anymore. Yuri doesn't even answer. She simply hugs me. I return her embrace. As we hug, Yuri presses her face into my chest and cries into my shirt. We continue hugging. She looks me in the eyes. Caesar? Yes, Yuri? Is... is this real? This isn't just my mind playing tricks on me. It's not that I don't want to believe you. It just seems too good to be true. This is real. I love you, Yuri. You mean so much to me. And as long as I'm here, I will never abandon you. You. Yuri's sobbing between sentences. You're the most thoughtful person I've ever known, Caesar. I'll do everything I can to be the best girlfriend I can be. You know, now that I think about it, maybe this isn't that unrealistic. Because, I mean, both of these... Both of these two, they're, they're young. They've probably never been in a relationship before. So, you know, it's kind of like the story of Romeo and Juliet, where they just, they hopped into love way too quickly. They were too young and too inexperienced to understand the difference between, you know, the fires of passion versus the slowly burning flame of commitment. Maybe uh, this is a bit more realistic than I first thought. You're already the best in my eyes. And I understand that dating might be new to you. Ah. Yuri nods. It is for me too. Oh, there you go. So don't be afraid to take it slowly if that's what you want. We can take it at whatever pace suits you best. Well, you're not taking it slow right now, guys. I mean, you're just proposing your undying, unyielding love for each other, and you've known each other for three days. You're taking this... You're taking this very quickly. She looks up at me and smiles. Okay. We both slowly release each other. The moment ended faster than I would have liked. Yuri and I stare at each other in amazement. We're, uh, well, we both are a bit shocked by today's events. Even if this wasn't how we initially wanted our festival plans to go, we had a good time in the end. Wait a minute. What's wrong, Caesar? I just realized we left the club performance. We should head back. You're right. I feel bad for dismissing myself without their approval. I'm sure they'll understand. They looked worried as you left. Come on. Let's go. I start walking back, but notice Yuri hasn't moved. Yuri? Is something wrong? Well, no. I was just thinking. I see a lot of- I see a lot couples interact in certain ways. Some hug, some kiss. Right? What's Yuri trying to say? So... I was kind of hoping that we could, you know. <sighs> Yuri's twiddling her fingers. Maybe hold hands. Wait, what? Yuri wants to hold my hand? <laughs> I love the excitement here. Hold her hand! Sure, I'd love to. Yay! We both gently hold each other's hand. Yuri's hand is warm. I have a weird feeling in my stomach. Nevertheless, I really like it. It's a good feeling. We then resume our walk back to the club. Okay, guys. So, I think we're going to end it there, because we're almost at the 40-minute mark here, so this is going to be a bit longer than uh, than my normal videos these days. But, uh, wow! A lot of eventful things happen there. Let me just go ahead and save. And next time, we'll see what happens when they return to the club. So, yeah, this mod is still pretty interesting to me. I know it's been a while since I made another episode of this. This is seeming a bit more like the story of um, Romeo and Juliet here. I wonder if the uh, developer actually based some aspects around it. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this time. Until the next episode, I'm Cesar Madrazo, and I am out.